Hey guys, Alex here. Um, today we got ourselves a Colt single action army. This, as you can see, is a Peacemaker Centennial commemorative Colt. And what drew me to this one over others was uh, how closely and historically accurate it is to the original cavalry Colt. So this is, uh, we're going to just get right into it. So. What we have here is the display box that it comes in. It has a place for a key, which I have coming. This one didn't come with the key, of course, it's being used. And if you flip the lid open, you are greeted with the gun itself in the glass. Let me get this out of the way for you. This is a little uh, pamphlet that did come with it, the Colt 45 Peacemaker. Um, essentially, this just gives a little history about it. Colt and the revolver itself, single action army. Put that aside for now. And you can see this has a, a gun in the display case and the actual plaque, which says Peacemaker, commemorating the 100th anniversary of the 45 Cal single action army revolver, which came to be known as the Peacemaker. And then we've also got on the top, a picture of Samuel Colt. Hopefully you can see that. So, I'm going to pull the gun out just so that we can uh, get a look at it while I give you a little bit of history on the gun. The drawer just comes out like that. And you can push it back in like so. Close that up, Put that there. Okay, so this gun came out in the 70s. I believe it was 1975 when they were finally delivered, even though it commemorates 1973, 1873. But um, pretty much these were announced, I think, 1973, but didn't come out till 1975. And it was actually part, you could order uh, just this gun or there was a nickel-plated or a nickel frontier revolver to commemorate the original 4440 Peacemaker, if you will. And they also made one of those, or you could get it in a double set with a double display case that came with both with matching serial numbers. Uh, this one is not one of those. That's this one is just the uh, just the cavalry. Um, I think the seller also did have the. Uh, a nickel version, but I wanted the Calvary. And, um, that's a little bit of history about that. And this is just going to be a quick, dirty review. Nothing too uh, complicated. We're going to uh, do a complete teardown and stuff at a later video and also a shooting video later. But I just wanted to show you this, uh, kind of do a brief intro. So, a few things about this is, hopefully you can see it, um, it has two line patents and it has a US stamp for the US property and on the grip here you've got the uh, inspector stamp which I think is actually Sam Colt's initials but I think you could probably pass it off as an actual inspector stamp but I think this is more Sam Colt's uh, initials in a stamp fashion um, the barrel says 1873, Peacemaker Centennial, 1973. On the top, it has a period correct, uh, italicized Colt uh, Manufacturing, Hartford, Connecticut, USA. Um, it's got the narrow rear sight with a front blade sight that's tapered inward, just like the originals. It's got the bullseye um, ejector rod. And um, I'll show you this a little later, but the base pin is also period correct. It has a hole tapped in uh, both the front and back of it. Of course, this is a 7.5 inch barrel in 45 Colt, which is the original configuration, the cavalry configuration, if you will. Uh, for a gun from the 1970s, the color case hardening is really beautiful. This is actually a second generation gun, late, late second generation. I had a previous one that I didn't like that uh, 
these ears weren't nearly as uh, shaped as well as they are. They're almost a straight slope down. I didn't like that too much. Um, and also the loading gate did not fit nearly as flush as this one does. Um, another period correct thing about this one is um, actually has the last three of the serial numbers stamped on here to kind of make it look like the bin number that you'd find on the originals. So that's fun. And um, of course you got serial numbers stamped everywhere here. Uh, this is a walnut one piece grip which we'll see later in the full tear down. It's got the uh, knurled hammer with uh, banded so it has a band on each side even though it's thinner the originals were a little thicker on the bands but that's okay um then beautiful color case hardened uh, hammer one of the only ones second generation that came standard like that um only other difference between this and an original i think is this firing pin right here is the concave style when the original had the cone style but this is a uh, fixed firing pin, not the floating one. So that's good to know. And you know, I just gotta do this. You know, it's a Colt, cause C, O, L, T. That's right, so. Um, this also features the black powder frame. So it's got the uh, screw there to take it out. And then, uh, I don't know if you can see this very well, but see that these cylinders with the black powder bevel on them uh, the cylinder is also stamped with the serial number, so that's good. And um, I do have a, uh, I guess the originals uh, had a brass ejector, a brass plated ejector rod spring, and I do have one of those coming from Peacemaker Specialists. And I guess I've also got the correct type of uh, screw to hold in the black powder frame because I, in the second generation and third they kind of used a different type of screw. But, so that's just a few things I'm doing to this gun. But, I guess I'll show you how to strip, just field strip this one, you know, if you need to clean it. I'm sure you know how to, but if not, well, you learn, you get your screwdriver out. Of course you want hollow ground screwdrivers, gunsmithing screwdrivers to make sure they fit just right. These are actually specific for this gun. And all you do is you put it in the slot like that, and then you have to twist the screw out of the slot, the black powder slot. And I don't think the screw has to come all the way out, but I could be wrong. Nope. So flip open the loading gate, put it on half cock, and then pull the pin out, and that will allow our cylinder to slide right out. So, this is the base pin. You're probably not going to be able to see it, but it actually is uh, got a hole in the front and a hole in the back. That's the uh, black powder type that they discontinued uh, when they moved to the smokeless frame. And then this is what I was talking about with the screw. It's uh, not the original type of screw. When I get that screw, I'll have to do a comparison on it. But um, this is actually just a threaded screw all the way, where the originals uh, flattened out and were not threaded after a while. But So this isn't really the original screw, but I do have one of those coming that I'm pretty excited for. Oops. So, you know, it takes a little bit more time to get your cylinder out than the, uh, you know, cross-pin latch system, but it works. Um, so, of course, that's how you field strip it, so now you could, uh, you know, do your cleaning inside the cavity there, clean out your cylinder. Of course, this has the, uh, removable bushing, right? Which is good. We like that. Um, so yeah, there's not much more to say about the gun. I mean, uh, when I got it, of course it was used. Uh, I could tell it was a shooter, very dirty, uh, wasn't cleaned before it got sold, so my hands were covered in soot, so this will also be a shooter. Um, I might have considered just keeping it as a safe queen if, uh, you know, it hadn't previously been shot, but this one's obviously been shot, so 
you know, really good condition still. But it's just been shot, so may as well make it a shooter. So I'll look for a, a shooting video on this very soon. Uh, and also look for a disassembly video when I get the parts in from Peacemaker Specialists. I'm going to do a disassembly video and do a complete breakdown of this gun, remove everything but the barrel. And, you know, just in case you wanted to find that interesting. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you on this is, uh, you probably won't see it very well, but the back of the cylinder, funny enough, is actually stamped with a little Colt horse. Rampaging Colt or whatever. You probably can't see it in the camera, but it was a kind of a neat touch that uh, I really liked. All things considered, maybe I can get it to focus here. Hopefully that's focused now. You can see it right on uh, that cylinder there. So, that's cool, but I'm going to put this back together, and uh, I think that really kind of does it for this video. We will uh, definitely have to get it on the range. Of course, me being stupid, always got to half cock it before you try and put your cylinder in. Jesus. But there we go, now that goes. You, know, you never want to force it and then drop our pin in. Some people say it helps to close that loading gate to get your pin back in. But now that we do that, of course, you never want to drop the hammer from half cock either. You always want to go back to full cock. Drop it like that. That will let us now screw our black powder pin back in. I like to put my finger right up there to try and keep the screwdriver in line to not damage anything. Just like that. Now, half cock. Nice smooth ejector on this gun. Uh, the previous one I had, the ejector was not smooth. It would uh, keep catching on the uh, housing for whatever reason. And it just wasn't a pleasure to use. This one's nice and smooth. You can see it eject like that. Move on to the next one. Eject. Move. Eject. Of course. I hold it more like this when I'm ejecting, but I do know people that have been able to do it one-handed and stuff, but I just, not for me, so. Nice. Can't beat a Colt single action army. So, you know, I'd say overall this is a very historical uh, representation of the original cavalry, other than the... Uh, barrel roll mark, the Peacemaker one, and the few other details I mentioned, one being uh, <clears throat> the screw for the black powder frame is, you know, not quite the same one, the firing pin being uh, concaved instead of cone, of course. Um, but, you know, that's really non-incidentals. The only other thing, uh, the loading gate, uh, they call it a skinny loading gate. It was popular, uh, I think they started using the skinnies after the 1960s. And pretty much instead of matching the shape of the frame back here, it actually, uh, you know, instead of being one solid radius, it actually kind of thins out near the top. Uh, I'd take a trained eye, kind of see it, but once you see it, you can't really unsee it. So, I mean, I think Ruger's do the full full one too, but Colt moved to a skinny, so, you know, if you had the money, you could probably put a first gen one on there, and maybe it would look good, maybe match the color case hardening, maybe not, but um, other than that, it's the same gun they were carrying in 1883 into the uh, you know, Custard's big battle there, so pretty cool. I am definitely excited to fire it. Um, spring is right around the corner and I am getting the itch to shoot this gun. So 
I will definitely bring you along with me when I do the first firing of this. And like I said, keep your eyes out as well for the full disassembly where we're going to take down every single thing and you're going to see exactly how to put one of these back together and how to take them apart, etc. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I do my best to get back to everyone in the comments. And if you like this video, make sure you subscribe. Again, or don't, but it does help a little bit, I guess. And leave a like if you want. But this has been Alex. This has been uh, my brand new to me, Peacemaker Centennial Colt Single Action Army. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.